Mother, is Maxwell House the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. <laughs> This is the time of year, I think, when most people become restless. The weather's bad, summer vacations are a long way off. It's one of those times when you wish you could just get away from it all for a while. Spend a weekend in the country and relax. Well, before you get any such ideas, let's stop off in Springfield at the white frame house on Maple Street and see how the Andersons were affected one fine Friday by a notion just like that, like this. Mother, if you'd only speak to Father about it. I'm sorry, Betty, but I don't think it's a good idea. Gee whiz. All right, Kathy, stop playing with your cereal and drink your milk. Well, it isn't as though we wanted something stupendous. Creepers, Janie Liggett's father takes them all the time. I know, dear, but the Liggetts have more money than we do. Joe Phillips' father isn't any richer than we are, and they've been away twice. Everybody can have fun but us. All we ever do is stay home and drink milk. <laughs> well, of course, there's uh, another way of doing it. If it's so terribly important, why don't you ask your father? You mean me? I mean all of you. All he can do is say no. Mother's absolutely right. As soon as father comes down, we'll have Bud ask him. Oh, good. Why do I have to ask him? It was your idea. That's right. Leave all the dirty work to me. You always do anyway. Now, Betty, if Bud doesn't want to do it... He never wants to do anything. Is that so? Yes, that's so. I do more around here than you and Kathy put together. <clears throat> oh, you do not. I do, too. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning darling. Father. Who carries the garbage out? I do. Who takes care of the ashes? I do. Good morning, Bud. I work harder than any kid in this neighborhood, and you know it. Bud... When there's grass, I have to cut it. <laughs> Leaves, I have to rake them. Sidewalks, I have to sweep them. Bud. Every time it snows, <laughs> who gets handed a shovel? Me. Every time someone has to go to the store, who gets called? Me. Bud. Any time there's a... <laughs> Any time that there's a... Bud. Yes, Dad? Good morning. Good morning, Dad. That's better. Now, as soon as your mother hands me my coffee... There you are, dear. Thank you. You may tell me the reason for that impassioned recitation of Sterling, if highly questionable accomplishment. Huh? What's the beef, bud? <laughs> well, Betty said that I ought to ask you, and I just said I wouldn't. In a few million well-chosen words. Well, gosh, why should I? It was her idea in the first place. What was? What we were talking about. What were you talking about? Betty's idea. <laughs> uh, let's start all over again from the beginning. Good morning, bud. Good morning. Beautiful day, isn't it? Uh, Jim, dear. Just a moment, Margaret. I'm trying to sneak up on this thing. What thing, dear? Margaret, please, one at a time. <laughs> all right, bud. Betty had an idea, and you don't see why you should, because when it snows, you have to run errands with a shovel. Then what? Is that what I said? <laughs> I'll get your cereal, dear. Thank you. Father. Yes, Betty? Father, we were thinking, well, that is, we all thought, well, what I mean is, it'd be just as good for you. It would? Oh, of course. And you'd probably have a much better time than anybody. Where? What? Where would I have this wonderful time? Of uh, where we were talking about. I see. Good morning, bud. <laughs> Good morning, Dad. Beautiful day, isn't it? Uh, Jim. Margaret, if you'll just have a little patience, please. I got a lot closer that time. <laughs> well, 
Oh, gee whiz, if somebody doesn't ask him, I'll be late for school. Uh, would it ease the situation if I said no without anybody asking me? Oh, yeah, no. Well, I was just trying to help. Oh, here you are, dear. Nice hot cereal. Mmm, smells wonderful. Cream and sugar, bud, please. Okay, Dad. Thank you. Father. Daddy. Dad. Yes? We were just wondering. Do you suppose it'd be all right? Just this one. If we all went away? To the mountain? For the weekend? Is that the question? Yes. yes. No. Mmm, <laughs> tastes good, too. Gee whiz. You see, kids, it wasn't hard at all, was it? All you have to do is speak right up. But you said no. That's right. Holy cow. Joe Phillips didn't even want to go to the mountains, and his father took him. Good. The Liggetts go practically every weekend, and they have a wonderful time. Fine. Everybody goes except us. And we don't ever get to go any place. You know, it's a funny thing. We've got a comfortable home, warm, clean, practically bulging with modern conveniences. But is anybody satisfied? No. You'd rather spend the weekend shivering in some flea trap in the woods. <laughs> But, Father, it's fun. Sure. Why this sudden passion for the mountains? What's the matter with Springfield? Oh, gosh, we want to get out in the snow. What do you think that is in the backyard? Confetti? <laughs> <laughs> we mean lots of snow, Father. Millions of bushels of snow. Okay, I'll talk to Ed Davis and see if we can borrow some of theirs. <laughs> Father, I've got a brand new ski suit, and I've never even worn it. And what good are my skates? And what good is a sled without hills? And they don't have any big hills in Springfield. They keep all the hills in the mountains. <laughs> Look, kids, you don't think I like to say no, do you? It's just that, well, uh, we can't afford it. It doesn't cost very much, Father. Really, it doesn't. Betty knows a place near Crestline where you can rent a cabin for practically nothing. And it doesn't even have water in it. So look at the money we'd save on soap. <laughs> Margaret, will you explain to them... It's right on the edge of a lake, Father. And, and you can even rent an ice boat. And the hills are 800 miles long. Why is it that I always have to be the villain? Everybody seems to think I stay awake nights trying to figure out ways to make my family miserable. Oh, you know we don't, Jim. It's just that this would be so much fun for the children. But it wouldn't, Margaret. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I know those little cabins you can get for practically nothing. They're one-room shanties with no improvements except built-in pneumonia. But Joe Phillips told me... Joe that... Phillips was sick for a week after their last trip, wasn't he? Well, sure, And but... his father was flat on his back for two weeks. I know, Dad, but... Nothing happened to Mrs. Phillips. How can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Helen Phillips could have a galloping case of sleeping sickness, and nobody would ever know the difference. Jim, please. Well, I'm just trying to explain. Janie Liggett's family goes to a place... Betty... Yes, Father? We are not the Liggetts. I know, Father, Nobody but... can afford to do what the Liggetts do. But, Father... And that includes the Liggetts. <laughs> <laughs> Father, if you'll only let me tell you... Tell me what? We don't mind roughing it for a few days, do we? Heck no. Gosh, it'd be worth getting pneumonia. Kathy. Well, wouldn't it? It may be that I have very old-fashioned ideas, but I believe that a father has certain obligations to his family, and keeping them alive happens to be one. Now, let's not talk about it anymore. I'll be 50 years old before I get a chance to use my sled. Well, fine, you can take your grandchildren for a ride. <laughs> Daddy, you're silly. I am, huh? Sure. They'll have their own slabs. <laughs> Margaret! Margaret! Why, Jim, what are you doing home this early? It isn't even four o'clock. Margaret, wait till you hear what happened. Where are the kids? We're well, upstairs, the... Father. Well, come on down. We're going to the mountains. For what? Most amazing thing you ever heard. Oh, but, Jim, I thought you said that Wouldn't you... happen once in a million years. But, Jim, I... Stop, Dad. Oh, oh, what's all this All right, oh, right. let's on. calm down. Everybody take it easy. Father, what happened? Well, Mr. Gribble came into my office this afternoon, and we... Well, we were discussing families and children, and first thing you know, I told him how I was letting mine down. Oh, Jim, dear, you aren't really. Well, I'm not now. 
Mr. Gribble says we can use his hunting lodge. A hunting lodge? Holy cow. Wait till I tell Janie Liggett. Well, Jim, I thought you didn't want to go to the mountains. Margaret, I didn't want to go to one of those shacks the kids were talking about. But Gribble's hunting lodge, well, that's a different story. You can just imagine what kind of a place he has. Oh, Father, you're wonderful. You're just the most wonderful father anybody ever had. And how? Well, don't just stand there. Go on upstairs and pack. Pack? Jim, you don't mean now. Of course I mean now. If we want to get there before dark, we've got to leave ten minutes ago. (laughs) Takes over two hours to get there. But I can go now, Father. I have a date tonight and tomorrow night. So have I. Well, if this isn't... You said you wanted to go to the mountains, didn't you? Sure, but we didn't mean today. Holy cow. (laughs) Jim, we can't possibly go on such short notice. What... Our clothes aren't ready, and and we have to buy food. Gribble said the place was loaded with food. And what kind of clothes do you need? Shove a couple of sweaters in a suitcase, and you're all set. What'll I tell Billy Smith and Dick Andrews? What'll I tell Joe Phillips? I don't care what you tell them. I told Mr. Gribble we'd be happy to use his hunting lodge, and we're going to use it. I don't want to go to the (laughs) mountains. I thought you wanted to use your sled. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Father, you don't even like the mountains I love the mountains You said it wasn't any fun I'm starting to have fun right now, see? (laughs) But you said we'd all get pneumonia I don't care if we all get double pneumonia You said you wanted to go to the mountains And you're going to the mountains if I have to drag you Well, let's start packing After all I know Father knows best. Well, like it or not, the family's going to take that trip to the mountains. We'll see how they fare in just a moment. But right now, ladies... With all coffee prices high these days, it really pays to remember Maxwell House is true economy. Yes, and here's how one lady found that out. When coffee prices went up, she started shopping around, thinking she could find a cheaper coffee that would do. But when she brought one home, her husband turned thumbs down. Too weak, he said. So she put a lot more in the pot. But still her husband wouldn't drink it up. It may be strong now, he told her, but the flavor's all wrong. This coffee just doesn't have what it takes. And meal after meal, leftover coffee went to waste. Then she realized Maxwell House is true economy. Sure it is. Because you get so many more truly good cups of coffee from every pound. Discover the wonderful difference that vacuum packing means. The extra freshness and clear, rich taste. See how much more your husband and you... Enjoy that wonderful flavor. So good to the last drop, you drink every drop. You'll say Maxwell House is true economy. So get your money's worth and more. Remember, in your cup, on your table, Maxwell House is true economy. Always good to the last drop. Well, a few peaceful hours have gone by, and on the edge of a quiet mountain road, white with new fallen snow, we find the Andersons. The air is crisp and clear, and because of the altitude, just a trifle thin. Maybe that's why poor Jim is puffing just a little. Or perhaps there's another reason, like this. Okay, bud. When I give you the word, give it the gas. Okay, Dad. Are you ready? You bet. Well, let's go. Okay, bud, that's enough. You say something, Dad? I said that's enough. Turn it off. Okay. No good country roads. Always getting stuck. Didn't work, huh, Dad? No, it didn't work. Now we're good and stuck. Well, Father, I told you we were going off the road. You told me. Everybody's always telling me. Look at the tree. Look at the sky. Look, look, look. How do you expect me to see anything? (laughs) But 
but... We but aren't I... off the road. We're still on the road. We're halfway through the road. <laughs> Dear, maybe we ought to go back home. Margaret, how are we going to go anywhere? We're stuck. Well, I mean, after we get out. Well, let's worry about it when we get out. If we get out. I'm hungry. <laughs> now, let's not start that again, Kathy. But I am. Jim, I told you we should have brought some food. Well, how did I know we were going to get stuck? We should have been there an hour ago. Bud. You want me, Dad? No, I just want to hear your name. <laughs> It's such a beautiful name, so warm and friendly. Holy cow, now what did I do? <laughs> Nothing. Come on out here and help me push. Okay. The chains won't take, huh, Dad? I don't know what it is. It doesn't seem to be the snow so much. I think we got into some kind of a hole. Doggone thing looks like the Grand Canyon. Uh, Betty? Yes, Father? Slide over and back of the wheel. Daddy! Just a minute, Kathy. Put it in low, and when I give you the signal, let the clutch out fast. Do you understand? I suppose so. <laughs> well, there's nothing so complicated about it. Daddy! What is it, Kathy? Somebody's coming. Well, good for us. Maybe now we'll get out of here. Hello there. Hey! <laughs> I said hello. Uh, we're stuck in the snow. Having a little trouble? Yes, we're uh, stuck in the snow. No, huh? Sure looks like you're having trouble. We are. We're stuck. Eh? <laughs> I said we're stuck. Uh, can you pull us out with your tractor? Tractors, huh? <laughs> Don't see many of them up here in the wintertime. I didn't say we were actors. We want you to pull us out of the snow. Putting on a show, huh? <laughs> No, good for you. <laughs> Will you please turn that thing off? Eh? I said turn the motor off. Turn it off. Wait a minute, turn this darn thing off. Can't hear you. <laughs> now, well, what is you saying, young fella? I said we're stuck in the snow. Well, I... you don't have to shout. I ain't deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We, uh, we'd appreciate it very much if you'd pull us out. Ooh, stuck in the snow, huh? <laughs> yes, we certainly are. Well, won't be much of a job. Where are you putting on the show? I told you before, we're not actors. No? No. Well, then what are you doing putting on a show? <laughs> we're not putting on a show. I never even mentioned a show. I said we were stuck in the snow. Oh, snow. I thought you said show. No. Oh. Well, don't make much difference. Never go anyway. Here, grab onto this tow rope. All right. Want me to hook it up, Dad? Yeah, go ahead, bud. I'll wrap it around the bumper a couple of times. You better hook it onto the frame, bud. Okay. I sure could have sworn you said you was actors. No, we're just up here for the weekend. A friend of ours is letting us use his hunting lodge. Maybe you know him, J.P. Gribble? Gribble? Nope, can't say he's a do. What's he look like? Well, he's rather large, has a very deep voice, about yeah. 50 years old, very dignified. Hey, you mean the feller comes up from Springfield, fatso. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he lives in Springfield. Well, you ain't going to get to fatso's place this way. I'm not? No, sir, you're heading down to the lake. Oh. Yes, you took the wrong turn back at the corners. I see. Uh, is it uh, very far from here? No, won't take you more than 20 or 30 minutes. I'll show you a special shortcut. Save you three or four miles anyway. <laughs> How you doing, son? I think I've just about got it. Okay, climb out from under there. Hurry up, bud. You've been very kind, and I want you to know we appreciate it. Oh, shucks. It ain't hardly nothing. <laughs> what are people for if not to help one another? If you can't be neighborly, I always say you might just as well go someplace and lay down. <laughs> and that's all I'm doing is being neighborly. Well, it isn't everybody who'd go to all this trouble for complete strangers. It's all set. Okay, son. Well, I'll have you yanked out of there in no time now. Thank you. You'll never know how grateful we are. Oh, that's okay. Would you like to give me the money now? We... <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> well, it ain't that I don't trust you, but these here tractors don't go very fast. A couple of fellas got away slick as a whistle. Oh. Weren't very uh, neighborly, huh? Not so as you could notice it. <laughs> well, hand up the $15 and we'll get going. <laughs> $15? High, ain't it? Why, it's outrageous. Yeah, I know. But don't forget, I got a split with a fella what dug the hole. <laughs> Stopping, Jim. Oh, it's no sense going any further. I can't even see the road. Boy, it's sure snowing. I'm hungry. <laughs> Father, I told you we were on the wrong road. We are not on the wrong road. He said turn left after the small bridge and then right at the fork. But he said two miles and you went almost five. Well, I have a very silly habit. When I make a turn, I like it to be on a road. <laughs> or would you rather go floating around in somebody's cornfield? Oh, Jim, please don't get upset. I'm not getting upset, but we're not lost. Well, where are we? How do I know? <laughs> Stop asking silly questions. Dad. What? Do you see something out there? Where? Over there, in back of those trees. Father, it's a house. I don't see any... Oh, that's no house. It looks more like a cattle shelter. Well, it's better than being cooped up in the car. My legs are paralyzed. I'm hungry. <laughs> Jim, we've got to do something. We can't sit here all night. Maybe someone lives here, Dad. They might know where Mr. Gribble's place is. All right, let's go ask him. Oh. Boy, that wind's cold. Well, don't just stand there. Let's go. Jim? Wait a minute, bud. Margaret, there's no need for you to come along. Well, if you don't mind, dear, we'd rather... Margaret, I'm perfectly capable of asking... Oh, you mean they might have some food. I'm hungry. <laughs> Right now, if I had to choose between a mink coat and a cup of coffee, I'd be reaching for the cream and sugar. Well, come on, Kathy. I'll carry you. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Let's go, bud. When I think of where I could be right now. Betty. Sitting in a nice warm movie, eating nice hot popcorn. Betty, this whole thing was your idea. My idea. And if I hear so much as one word of complaint out of you, so help me out... Paddle, you bow-legged. Father! That's telling her, Daddy. That goes for you, too. Gee whiz. I wanted to stay home where it's warm and comfortable. But no, we've got to be like the Liggetts and the Phillips. We've got to go to the mountains for the weekend. Look at this place. The worst-looking dump I've ever seen. The door's locked. Well, don't you think you ought to knock first? There's nobody inside, Dad. I looked through the window. Oh, dear, now what are we going to do? Bud, you've got heavy shoes on. See if you can kick the lock off the door. Oh, Jim, do you think... It's that... all right, Margaret. Go ahead, Bud. Okay, Dad. Don't kick it too hard. You might shove the whole building over. <clears throat> Gosh, that was easy. Well, don't feel too excited about it, Samson. <laughs> A large termite could have done the same thing. <laughs> well, let's go on in. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of, Kathy. Go on in. Oh, Jim, isn't this place awful? Well, this is what they wanted. A weekend in the mountains. Aren't there any lights? No. And the bath is probably the first door on the left and 300 yards straight ahead. <laughs> Dad, here's a candle. Well, light it. Okay. Ah, Kathy. What's the matter? Where? Up in the wall. Oh, oh for him. Kathy. <laughs> well, well, there is. And they chopped his head off. It's just a trophy, Kathy, probably shot by whoever owns this horrible joint. See, there's a plaque under it. Oh, I don't like it. Let me have the candle, bud. Here you are, Dad. Oh, look, Kathy, there's nothing to it, see? It says, Black Bear, 840 pounds. Oh, no. Uh, Jim, what is it? December 1st, 1938, J.P. Gribble. <laughs> so 
So that's Mr. Gribble's hunting lodge. Looks like the family's got to make the best of a very poor bargain. And that brings up a mighty important point. Ladies, when you buy coffee, remember Maxwell House is true economy. Sure, Maxwell House is true economy. Of course, you can find cheaper coffees if the price tag is all you consider. But just consider this. Is there any economy when you have to use lots more coffee to make it strong enough, yet even then you can't get the flavor you want? Is there any economy when the flavor is so lacking your family leaves coffee unfinished in the cup? Figure it out. You'll say Maxwell House is true economy. So many more cups of wonderfully good coffee in every pound. So rich and extra flavorful. So good to the last drop, you always want more. Yes, there's good reason why more people drink Maxwell House than any other brand at any price. Maxwell House is true economy. So tomorrow, get your money's worth and more. Get Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. The horrible night is over at last. Now it's Saturday morning. The storm has passed, the sun is shining, and the entire world seems brighter and far more cheerful. To most people, that is. Good morning. Good morning, dear. Did you sleep well? Like a top. And I'm still spinning. <coughs> oh, my back. I'll never get it straightened out. Where are the kids? They're outside in the snow. Oh, they're having a wonderful time. See, you can see them through the window. I can see them through the wall. <laughs> Margaret, have you ever seen any place worse than this in your life? No, dear, I haven't. Hunting Lodge. Just wait till I see that guy gribble. Oh, he meant well, dear. You should have heard the build-up he gave it, too. Secluded, restful, the most beautiful view in the country. Well, there is a nice view, Jim. Sure, especially through the roof. Look at it. <laughs> well, you'll feel better after a nice hot breakfast. Oh, you found the food, huh? Uh-huh, a whole closet full. Good. I haven't eaten since noon yesterday. Well, what would you like? Some nice hot beans? Margaret, don't be ridiculous. I'll have eight dozen eggs and about 40 sausages. No sausages, dear. How about some nice hot beans? No, thank you. I'll just have eggs. No eggs, dear. How about some nice hot beans? Margaret, I don't like beans. Why can't I... Margaret. Yes, dear. You mean... Yes, dear. A whole big closet full of beans. <laughs> If you like good things the easy way Good things the easy way Instant Maxwell House, that's for you Good, good coffee that's easy too No time, no trouble No grounds, no pot And it's good to the very last You, you know, know what? Yes, Instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. Here's real instant coffee. All pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. Enjoy Instant Maxwell House instantly. Good to the very last you know what. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Don't forget, membership cards for the Robert Young Good Drivers Club are waiting for you at your local NBC station. Get a man-to-man -man or dad-to-daughter pledge and sign up today. Be a good driver. Get your membership card in the Robert Young Good Drivers Club today. Now until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Screen Guild Theater, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Next, Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor in Double Indemnity on NBC.